What's up, everybody? Super stoked to be bringing you all another episode of the Launch Podcast. This one is with former college football teammate at Georgetown University, Charlie Houghton. Charlie is an absolute beast. He was a standout athlete on our team at Georgetown, and his fitness has certainly only gotten better since he has left school which was about 10 years ago now so quite impressive what he has been able to maintain this was a fun conversation just talking about different fitness and nutritional approaches and we also talk about a drink he is about to release this summer called boulder b-o-l-d-r so stay tuned with that we're looking forward to getting a sip this summer music today is brought to you by the palms thank you johnny and ben for letting us roll your tunes the song that you are listening to right now is called Human Condition. Also wanted to mention that we are still doing 25% off on monkey bars. So if you want to get in on the monkey action and work out anywhere, head on over to monkey, M-O-N-K, double I, dot co. Grab yourself some monkey bar twos. Upon checkout, throw in code LAUNCH to get your discount. All right, I think that's enough. Enjoy, everybody. We'll see you at the top. Yo. All right, right. What's nice. Good? How you doing? How are you, man? Good. Just staying warm out here. Good. <laughs> You're in the back of your car right now? Maybe. <laughs> 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 and there's snow on the ground? Maybe. <laughs> right on. Well, we're in super uh, bush, bush league right now. We got a voice memo going on the speakerphone. So th- what, what we got to do. I love it, man. It's yeah. not bush league. That's just doing what you got to do. And, <laughs> and, and then you're sleeping out of the back of your car. This is great. Startup life, baby. Startup life. <laughs> I'm in my own incubator, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, just incubator. <laughs> this is my think tank. <laughs> Z, how is, Z, how was your day today, bro? It was good. It was really nice. I did a little Wim Hof breathing. That's epic. How did you feel after? Yeah, it was wild. It was a lot like holotropic breathing. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the same elements, but a few more active movements during the practice. Mm-hmm. But then following it, uh, well, not following it, as part of the practice, we went outside and stood in the snow and walked around in the cold. And I think the next progression is getting in the river. Mm-hmm. But if, if, if you know me, I'm like, it's kind of comical that I ski because I'm really, really scared of the cold. But, um, dude, I was out there standing in the snow, shirt off, um, just in sweatpants and wow. feeling feeling like strong so i'm super <laughs> stoked i'm gonna get into it way more that's, that's awesome. so just another thing to do you've just, gotten it you've gotten into breathing with your weightlifting, right oh yeah dude it's intense what like, do you do for your lifting so in terms of my program or well for your um for the breathing for the breathing for the breathing it's similar concepts to like what we do with breath work uh-huh um it's really kind of focusing on oxygenating the body. Uh-huh. Like, I've got to the point where I don't even time myself for workouts. I just say, okay, I'll give myself, depending on which exercise it is, between five and ten breaths, right? Focus on just hyper, not hyperventilating, but just pumping my body with a lot of oxygen. Uh-huh. And then I just pump through the workout. So and you I get in this. Before the workout, you are what, breathing through your mouth or nose? For the mouth. Through your mouth. Yeah. You're hyper oxygenating your body. Yeah. And then you go into your lift. Yeah. And then you just crank it out. Yeah. But I'm also really focused. I turn off my, like, I try to turn off my phone. Uh huh. Like, texting. Uh huh. Because I get into this, I've found a way of, and you talk about flow states. Uh huh. I've found a way to get into flow states in the gym. Right. Like, very epic ones. Really? Yeah. It's, how do we do it? To the point. I mean, I'd love to. Because I, I, I get, into, I get yeah. into it when um, I'm lifting um, or doing some monkey workouts yeah. in some pretty enriching environments mm-hmm. or there's fear involved. So maybe you're standing on the side of like yeah. a rock or you're hanging off a tree that's high yeah. up. Yeah. That type of stuff. Yeah. 
so that's exactly the kind of stuff, right? I hyper focus on what I'm doing, uh-huh. and I'm focusing on literally hand on weight, grip weight, strong, right? Uh-huh. Focusing on moving the weight and just focusing literally on move, just uh-huh. dynamic. You're one with it, right? Yeah. And I get to this point where I don't even know that there's other people. Yeah. I just look at the weight. I focus on the weight. Things don't feel heavy anymore at all. Like I almost have like this extra gear, this like phantom gear uh-huh. from working out in this way. And I actually listen to certain types of music. What type so of music? So I usually listen to kind of like droney, like stoner rock. Uh-huh. I usually listen to this one song called Dope Smoker. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's an hour long epic journey of a song. And it's really just kind of like chanting, but it's just really heavy guitars, really kind of simplistic music, but some like really intense kind of yeah. transitions uh-huh. where it helps, you know, you kind of time it up with like whatever you're doing in the exercise. You know, if it's like a really heavy lift, where I do a lot of heavy stuff, right? I time it up for those crescendos mm-hmm. and I just crush. So people, I think, actually sometimes maybe get a little uncomfortable because I don't look at anybody. I just focus hey. on the weight. I go like almost like a machine. Like yeah, I'm just I walk up to it. I get inside the thing. I lift like 600 oh. pounds. Just done. Hey, and then, you know? I lifted for for five years with you. <laughs> but you yeah, are just, one dialed in dude, Charlie. I don't know. I'll what, tell you what. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'm like I'm, not, I'm probably not that popular at the gym. No, that's all good though. <laughs> but that's not why we're there. Though. Yeah, we're not. That's yeah, not why we're there. You so. get in, you get in, get out. I think that's why I left the gym is because yeah, you're trying to like you're trying to work out and there's just a lot of other people there that may yeah. not be trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. Yeah, so. but you know, part of it I found has been interesting for me is kind of taking a dynamic approach to my workouts. For that reason, is that I tend to go in with no plan. I same. know. Yeah. And I know Zach says the same stuff too. It's like we just kind of go off of feel. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you can start working out with just a feel based approach, you can stay in flow state. Yeah. Yep. Right? I agree. Because then you're, so, not, you're not super structured. You're not structured. So then you can lock yourself into this flow state and stay there. Because you're not waiting for a rack. You're not waiting for the bar. Mm -hmm. You're not waiting for anything. So if I see someone occupying something that I need, I'm well-versed enough in the gym that I know the next best appropriate alternative. Right. right? And I just immediately beeline there, Uh just like a man possessed. Right. And I'm just still in that zone, right? Still locked in. So that's also another thing because people are always at like the trainers. They ask me like, "What are you doing today? What are you doing today?" It's like, I was I like, "I don't know. I, don't know. I, I definitely know I want to get something heavy in yeah. on my legs." Yeah, <laughs> you know. And then I was like, "We'll see how it goes for the rest of it." And yeah. then they just kind of watch sometimes. So um, that's kind of how I am. Yeah, yeah. and I um, and Zach, I'm sure you could probably throw your insight on that too with your running and dropping into those states. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I mean. When I'm out there getting serious, like Charlie's talking about, where I'm really feeling it and getting into that flow state, mm-hmm. I won't even know. It can I, miles twenty through thirty could pass, and I won't even remember being there. Yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. flowing through, dude. Just crushing. Just flowing through. So, now nah, I think that's critical to any bit of training is being hyper focused. But right. what that means is really just being present in uh getting in your groove absolutely yeah and it, and what's interesting with charlie is you don't work out that much right no so I this don't. is take us through your your week i guess yeah so my week i used to have more instruction wait hold on for yeah <laughs> for those listening charlie is a monster I felt like a damn racehorse yeah this dude <laughs> is a complete gangster he played um, running back for us in college, and the dude was could not be touched in the backfield. Just super agile, super strong, just complete monster. Would you say you're in better shape now than you were in college? The crazy thing is, yes. What, working out less. Working out less. Eating yeah. less. Eating less. What? So, what do you attribute? What do you attribute that to? I think. 
there's several things, right? It's kind of using the Pareto effect uh-huh. in a sense, right? And it comes down to food. So 80-20. 80-20. Yeah. What are the vital few things that I can do now, uh-huh. right? That will have 80% of all the effects that I really want in my life. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was eating. You know, one of the things now, I eat plant-based. Uh huh. That's it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Uh huh. Don't mess around. When did that start? That started when man, when you you guys came into town, swooping <laughs> yeah. into town and yeah. tell me, it's preaching the good word, yeah, right? <laughs> so it's probably about you know, call it six to eight months now. Uh huh. Um, that really changed a lot for me. What did it change? It was. I felt lighter. I felt more energized. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was carrying around. You know, like a bunch of rocks in right, the belly, right. you know? And so that definitely changed a lot of my, like, my energy profile. Uh-huh. And my biggest concern transitioning to this plant-based diet, because I've always been a person that likes to lift. I've been taught by, you know, some of the best coaches in Canada before I went down to the States. And I've always just kind of stuck with that that type of thing. And I was always kind of had this in my mind that you got to eat a ton of meat you got to eat this, you got to eat that, you know, all these like animal products and all that stuff. And so naturally my first inclination was what's going to happen to my, my strength, what's going to happen to me in the gym, uh-huh. you know, all these different things. Right. And, and then per, purely for a personal reason, I don't care what other people think about me. Um, but I realized that I actually got stronger. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. And it was bananas. Did you lose any weight? So, talk, you know, we can talk about this later, but, you know, I also started doing my product. Right, 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 right. Too, so yeah, that was kind of, that, yeah, you know, it's not necessarily a fully clean um, mm-hmm. data set that you're working with there. But I did lose weight in total over that period of time, about eight pounds. Uh-huh. What do you weigh now? Uh, right now, 199 pounds. 199. 199. Yeah. 199. Can't get too <laughs> yeah. You know, but. Zach's like 127. <laughs> Man, on a good day, I'm not cold over here anymore. That was a burn. Dude. I was kidding, no, but he's he's <laughs> He is, man. He he's, he runs like the wind. <laughs> and so you drop some weight, yeah. But you're not. So you're not. You're in, you're still not eating a lot, though, right? No, I eat one solid meal a day, and I have a couple of drinks in the morning. And then you're training what three times a week. Three times a week. Heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. Uh-huh. And then on the off days, are you doing any sort of like... Yeah. What else are you doing? So I definitely take a lot of hikes. Hiking is like my thing. I just like to zone zone out, maybe listen to some music. I used uh-huh. to do podcasts, but I'm trying to, you know, kind of eliminate some of my inputs because I was looking to way too many of them. Uh-huh. So now I'm just listening to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> my boys. <laughs> And yeah, baby. <laughs> keeping it keeping it trimmed, maybe some Tim Ferriss, yeah, shout out. <laughs> um, but yeah, doing uh, hikes, and I'll sometimes do a little bit of a uh, hike mixed with running, so mm-hmm. do some trail running, just like good old Zach taught me. And uh, we more recently we've been doing the Peloton bike, um, so I kind of been jumping on that, getting a little bit of high intensity interval training. Yeah, sick man. Yeah. Well, I just I just think it's so crazy because. You look at your output and what you're doing in the weight room and what you're doing uh, elsewhere and to think that you're only like eating once and then training through it three times a week. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about what you're working on right now and kind of the, um, I guess the lens at which you are uh, looking at your training and the way you're eating through, yeah. through what you're building. Yeah, I want to like touch on what are you eating and how do you get away with Eating so little and being so jacked, and also yeah. have the, and also having the energy yeah. to do all this, right? Because that's yeah. the big thing, right? Is you're not eating. I mean, I know if I'm not eating, my energy levels kind of crash too, right? Know? Right. Because and and just quickly, like the importance of not eating a lot is that your digestive tract is like constantly working. So mm-hmm. you can achieve the same results from not eat, eating a ton, then you know that's that's a that's that's a huge blessing right absolutely well yeah for me i as i said i kind of use the pareto principle so i've said okay what are the the foods that are kind of like super foods and let's start experimenting with them 
and that's kind of been my my way of kind of operating my modest operandi in a sense is okay uh, really what that kind of pointed me to is a lot of the ayurvedic stuff in, in terms of you know supplementation but in like what is it, what does that mean the ayurvedic stuff ayurvedic stuff mm-hmm. so it's all kind of southern south asian kind of medical med, medicine system right mm-hmm. and these different herbs flowers etc have been used for thousands of years um, in ayurveda and really the the funny thing about it is you know from a western perspective people are not too tuned into all of the benefits of these things even though they've been tried and tested right you think of the lindy effect it wouldn't be around for a thousand couple thousand years later if it wasn't powerful it wasn't beneficial right and so um, I started kind of experimenting with, with turmeric and ashwagandha, rhodiola, um, you name it, you know, boswellia serrata, like everything. And just kind of playing around with those things for my morning shakes and kind of dialing in on different drinks. Like now I have just like half a dozen different drinks I can throw together and it'll be my, my first shake of the day. Uh-huh. right? And then I definitely like to use a lot of cacao, like, you know your common superfoods that a lot of Westerners know. Um, cacao is really big. Um, other high density nutrient foods. Um, and then for my meals, uh, my main meal, the evening meal, the only meal, uh, it's typically bowls. I think that's been a really good. By the way, approach. by the way, Charlie cooked up a <laughs> real nice bowl tonight. We had what? Portobello mushrooms, yeah. some quinoa, some kale. Yeah, I know there's some ginger in the quinoa. Ginger. We got some garlic. We uh-huh. got some onions. Just kind of saute it together. Get a little bit of Asian flair in there. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it, man. Yeah, I'm glad no, you enjoyed it. Thing. Yeah, we uh, we de- definitely like to do a lot of bowls because we find that we can get a lot of different flavors and nutrients in there, and kind of throwing it together a good mashup yeah and then you tends can eat to work. tomorrow yeah. or you can yeah. eat it the next day yeah it tends to work really easily without having to think through the presentation or how things are going to work out it just kind of works uh-huh. you know yeah um so how have you taken i guess your passion for nutrition and strength training mm-hmm. and exercise and all that and turned it into your company that you're building right now yeah, so... And how, I guess, how did that even start? Or I guess... Yeah. I kind of want to... I'm always curious about, like, how did you go from having, you know, doing all this to be like, you know what? I'm going to go start a company. Mm. Well, yeah, I've always had that that flair in a sense. I've always been kind of creating things since I was a little kid. I was into making planes, like the ones you fly with engines, building the, the model rockets to, you know, doing the, you know, the 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 little um labs for making your own crystals and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff you know like so i've always kind of had this creative flair design clothes and all that stuff and so i always have been meaning to it's always been kind of in me uh-huh. to be a creator and i it was a certain point where i was working in banking and i was like i can't do this anymore so you know you were in you were living in new york yeah so I was you were in new york for about five years five years after college yeah and you were doing the whole banking thing. Yeah. And then were you training like you were in yeah. New York like you are now? Did that ever, sub, you know, or were you kind of... Yeah, my training stays pretty consistent. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I never really changed much. I always got in, probably got even in the gym earlier because it was just you had to. Right, 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 That right. kind of schedule, getting there 4.30 in the a.m., Get your work out. Oh, you walk from the, the club right into the yeah, weight room. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? You're just all jacked up. Ready, rock, let's go. Yeah. Um but yeah, so it was it was New York five years, and then we ended up doing something random on the West Coast, which kind of changed the course of our lives. We went to a wedding. And it was our uh, you know, Kelvin, a good yeah. friend of ours we played yeah. football with. And uh we were in San Diego and that pretty much set the, the the mood for moving out to the west coast i didn't know that yeah yeah and then funny enough within six months yeah, between six and 12 months later there's an opportunity for my girlfriend andrea she moves out here and i followed shortly thereafter you left your job yep did you know you wanted to start this company when you came out here i did not what's the company called it's called boulder how do you spell it b-o-l-d-r 
Nice. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Hey, Zach, have you, have you seen his logo? I don't know if I have. It's on, it's on Instagram. They're new to Instagram. Oh, it's, baby. It's give sick. Us the, give us the tag. What is it? Oh, well, it's, it's, I, it's, it's sick. You just look at it. Yeah. It's white and black. And to actually talk through the logo. Yeah, yeah. The logo, uh, just wanted to have something super minimal. And, you know, the one thing that I, I thought was something that was important to the logo because it's it's got kind of a simplistic sans serif typeface for boulder but it does have something called an enso yeah an e-n-s-o which is a circle uh-huh. yeah drawn by hand freehand and it's just supposed to represent in in zen buddhism uh, a, a moment where your your body and your mind are free to create and love it that's that's kind of where the genesis of of you know the the ethos of this product and and where you know everything's kind of been built up from the brand identity and all that. Uh huh. Yeah. I like it, and I, I just gave you a follow. Ah, thank and, you very uh, much. I'm excited to watch this thing grow. I feel lucky to be in it at this early, early, early stages. So oh, thank you, man. And, thank and you. for those that listen, the, the the tag is at Drink Boulder B O L D R. There you go. There we go. Stay t- stay tuned. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're we're still working out the some of the kinks to to get the the branding right for our, our post, but we're we're excited to get it going. Yeah. So, what what makes th- what what makes this um, drink different than every other fucking nutritional drink on the right. market? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a crowded space. It's a yeah. really crowded space. You're going right into the yeah, right into it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, for me, it started with a deep dive of everything that we've seen. Well, what were you looking for? What was I looking for? I was looking for something beyond what's out there. Uh You know, I was looking for something that was on the the edge, you know, of, of experience and and what's not in the mainstream and kind of just looking on the fringes. Yeah. And the, what really got me to where I am was looking at a variety of different diets. And that came down to the ketogenic diet. Uh huh. And doing research there, I realized that there's some really interesting stuff on the performance side that I could start playing around with and then going deeper, the ability to actually consume a product that will put me into immediate ketogenic state. Which has never been done before. Which has never been done before. Uh-huh. That's very recent. For, yeah. for those listening and then also for myself because sure. I'm certainly not the expert in this space. <laughs> What is the ketogenic diet? Can you talk a little bit about what makes that up and and, um, how your product kind of plays into it? Absolutely. So the ketogenic diet is basically shifting your macronutrients to a high fat, moderate protein, low carb uh, mix. So you tend to be a little less than 50 grams of carbohydrates um, per day. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to draw down your natural stores of glycogen, which is the stored sugar, and blood sugar, which is glucose, Uh right? And you're trying to draw down those stores in your liver to the point where your body starts to convert fat into ketones, which will fuel your body. And the reason it does that is because all the, the the sugar that's in your body, either in storage or in your blood, or really it's in, in storage in your muscles, can't be used by your brain. If, if there's no enzyme in your muscles that actually breaks down glycogen, that can release it to supply your brain. Because your brain is 20% or more, or, or more yeah, of your energy right. needs, right? Mm-hmm. And your, your brain can't function without, without glucose or, or, or ketones. So, so really that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your body to uh, run in a ketogenic state, which is just elevated levels of blood uh, ketones in your blood, uh-huh. right? And you can track those things, you know, most effectively through a blood uh, blood monitor. Yeah. Shit, man. So, at you weigh, let's call it two hundred pounds. Yep. How many grams of protein are you consuming in a day? Uh, you, when you're talking about. Sources, that's a really good question. I don't even measure it out. So you, okay. Yeah. What about your, um, cause you were just mentioning 
your carb intake and then your yeah. fats and how they're they're different because you're not consuming a lot of carbs. Right. And you're upping your fats. Yeah. And then how does the drink play into that? What is what what is in the drink? Yeah. Well, do you want me to to kind of speak to the daily routine of like what kind of yes. macronutrients are yes. in, yeah. in there? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of it is going to be based off of medium tr- chain triglycerides, right? So MCTs, people talk about MCT oils and all this stuff with the bulletproof diet, yeah. right? Yeah. And the bulletproof coffee. And so that's definitely something that's really interesting because it's immediately convertible by your body into um, energy. Uh-huh. You know, instead of long chain um, fats, those tend to be a much slower um, metabolized, slowly metabolized by the body. So it's a lot of those types of fats, a lot of nuts, right? A lot of, um, what else do we have in there? Um, kind of like plant milks. You know, that's that's a really good thing for me. A lot of um, actually it really is a lot of a lot of nuts and then the herbs. Yeah. Right? The ashwagandha uh, right now is really in, uh, good for me and um, Kina Purians. And this is, is in the drink. Yeah, this is in my drink every day. What are those? What are those doing um, for you? For my body? Yeah. Well, uh, Mucuna Purians is is more of just like a, it's kind of a mood enhancer. Like I can just kind of throw it in there. Um, whenever I need it, just gets me in a good, you know, good state. I'm already in a good state, but it's just kind of like that extra little push, yeah. you know, get your day in the right, the right direction. Cause it's a precursor to L-Dopa, uh-huh. which is dopamine, uh, effectively. Yeah. No, yeah. I will say this cause I remember trying your drink. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's changed since I, it, tried it has, it. It yeah, has changed. different iterations. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember when I tried it, I was a little bit more calm. Yep. I can talk to you about that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was a little bit more calm in taking it, mm-hmm. which look, I, you know, you have these drinks and usually it's usually these drinks that you're like super energized. You're super, super jazzed up very yeah. rarely or for me at least. Yeah. And I had a drink where you actually like are calm and you feel more present and right. maybe you're slowing down a little bit all because mm-hmm. of you're taking this. That's exactly it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a few of the other things like ashwagandha, the, you know, the smell of a horse, it's another, again, Ayurvedic herb, uh-huh. um, which is really good for de-stressing the body, right? It's an adaptogen. So um, it helps actually moderate a lot of those common biomarkers of stress, um, namely your uh, cytokines, um, which are really the the byproduct of your immune cells that are uh, put out in your body or you know from your adrenal glands right so you have the adrenaline you have norepinephrine you have cortisol right it helps actually modulate those via clinical studies have shown peer-reviewed clinical studies show that it actually decreases those levels so your actual by your physiological stress right is decreased right and that kind of helps decrease this this negative spiral right where you feel bad and then you start thinking negatively yeah and thinking negatively actually induces your body to create more of those right you know variety of of um, cytokines and or um uh, they call them catecholamines or the group of epinephrine and um adrenaline and cortisol and all that stuff yeah yeah and so the drink itself are you are you looking to share this with people who are, you know, getting into a uh, big workout routine? Or is this more for, like, the busy person who's, like, you know, on his way, mm-hmm. running out the door to go to work? Like, who is this Who is this for? Yeah, so when I was looking at the industry itself, right, you know, what has been kind of the status quo for the energy drinks, right? It's focusing on energy. And, you know, life, I realized, and I think a lot of people, other people realize that life is a lot more complex than just getting a dose of coffee or caffeine in whatever form that may be. If it's a Red Bull, a Monster, Rockstar, et cetera, et cetera. It right? might be the worst thing that you could, <laughs> could need or exactly. have. And it's in that, in it's that very moment. focused on, like, quick hits of energy. Exactly. It's, like, very quick. Like, oh, have a Snickers, you right. know? <laughs> right. And, you know, what happens when you end up having these types of drinks is that, you have a, a very stimulative effect, obviously, from the caffeine, but you also have a big dose. And, you know, looking at all the, the numbers on these nutrition facts, you have Red Bull has uh, 80 
um, or it's actually more like 25 grams of, of carbs. And then you have, you know, kind of the sugar in it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm going to say two. right now in confidence, don't drink Red Bull. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> don't drink it. I'm not a doctor, but don't right. drink Red Bull. Right. And when you start, you start consuming all these sugars, right? And these simple sugars are immediately pumping up your, your, your blood glucose, right? And so what does your body naturally do? It turns on, you know, the, the pancreas goes into full overdrive, starts creating insulin, and it's starting to drive all of that glucose into the cells so you can balance your sugar levels, right? Because that's what glucose or insulin does. Kind of is a kind of a carrier of, of different um, substrates. And when you have this immediate drop, right, you pump it down and it's just like putting a ball under water, right? You put the ball under the water and you have really low glucose after this spike of insulin. And all of a sudden you're like, I need another monster drink. I need another rock star, right? You get this great idea, right? And you're like, let me just like kind of follow it up with another one, right? And then another one. And then you read stories in my research. I read, read about people having six to ten of these things a day. Right? And no. It's, it's scary stuff. It's really wow. scary stuff, right? And I just read a report, and you know, it's, you know, you can't really isolate the variables, but one guy, you know, took his life and he was drinking a dozen of these things a day, right? And you can't say directly that that was a cause of it, but you know, you have some kind of psychological issues potentially, and it kind of exacerbates those potentially, right? So it's not really clean data, it's not scientific, but you know, they're not good. You know, when you pair these things up with, with conditions, it's not good. So kind of bringing it back to the product was how do I create something that can work across several different areas of my life, right? Because from a personal standpoint, personal pain point, it was not just that I wanted to lift well in the gym. It was I wanted to be out on the trail, right? I wanted to be trail running and it was, I want to be hiking, I want to be biking. I'm cl- I climb, right? I, w- I want to do all these you things. Still climb? Yeah, I, I haven't climbed. We gotta go a climbing few months, sometime. But yeah, let's definitely when go Z climbing. When Z gets back, we'll go climbing. Let's definitely go climbing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah, get, we'll, get, we'll get Monkey Dan involved. <laughs> yeah. Get him going. And so I had all these things. And plus, I was trying to, at the time, do some entrepreneurial stuff, right? So I had all these things. I was like, well, how do I balance those, right? And so. You know, obviously it led me to the beta hydroxybutyrate or the scientific name of ketones, right? And so that's when I started playing around with that and I started thinking about, okay, well, what are the different areas of, of my life and what are the different things that I need in those particular areas of life and seeing the similarities and the crossovers, right? So I can kind of start cobbling together and doing all the research and looking at your know, National Center of Biotechnology um, institute so you can get all this information and get the, the peer review re- studies and all uh-huh. that stuff and, and read um, and it kind of came down to okay I need to have the ashwagandha I need to have the turmeric and I can explain if you're interested in, in why I chose those but then having a moderate level of caffeine right because there's also benefits to caffeine from a neuroprotective standpoint not just a stimulative standpoint, and also from an analgesic standpoint of just kind God, of... God, you're so so much smarter than me when it comes to this stuff. I'm like, <laughs> what are these words? That's great, man. But when you go, Keep going. When you just go into the hole and you're, you're trying to learn, right? Yeah. You want to create a good product. This is just... Yeah. To me, it's just what I need to do. Right. right? And so, you know, I realized, okay, well, I want to have some caffeine, but I think there's a sub, a sub you know, group of people who just can't handle caffeine, right? So I, I, I realized there's some really good research, and I've tested this anecdotally. Obviously, it's N plus one, but there's other people out there that have, have tried this combination, but mixing with theanine. So theanine is commonly found in green tea, right? And this molecule is actually a precursor to uh, GABA, which uh-huh. is a relaxatory neurotransmitter. Yeah. Beautiful. So when then you actually mix it with caffeine, it takes off the, the, the edges edge of it. Yeah. It takes off the edge. Exactly. So it kind of puts you in the Zen, like calm and focused state. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was kind of, I call it the energy complex when you mix the, the caffeine and the theanine with the, the ketones. 
right? Which the ketones are actually, they're actually fueling you, your body from a, um, a metabolic standpoint. So it's not like you're actually stimulated by ketones. There's no stimulation in ketones. It's actually a pure raw fuel source that goes in, it creates ATP or the body's energy currency, uh -huh. right? And that's what powers your muscles, right? Yeah. And it, in the brain, it crosses the, blink, the, blood, the blood brain barrier, excuse me, it's the tongue, tongue twister, and actually creates a much cleaner energy than if it were to be burning glucose. Yeah. Because there's, there's byproducts of burning glucose, which is actually stimulatory uh, kind of byproducts. Whereas the ketones, the byproduct of, of meta, 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 metabolic, met, metabolizing, wow, wow that's, that's, that's brutal. Uh, metabolizing ketones is actually creating a um, relaxatory um, byproduct. So it kind of, again, relaxes you. And so... Which is what I felt. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. And, and then the kind of, the, the herbs are, are perfect because turmeric is... A really good uh, antioxidant it's amazing antioxidant it's good for maintaining body mass it's great for um turmeric you know, something that you can i mean that's a that's that could be a daily thing yeah absolutely i use it every day yeah and no no ifs ands or buts i'm always using turmeric uh -huh. um but it, it has a whole host of of benefits from uh it kind of being anti-catabolic and you know keeping your muscles from breaking down to some studies suggesting that it's actually catabolic and helps actually regenerate muscle um, much faster. Um, and then there's just like a whole host of other benefits there. And then ashwagandha, which is really good, as I said, as an ad adaptogenic uh, compound, um, that is just by far so alongside rhodiola, kind of one of those like workhorse type of products where you take that, your recovery is so fast. You know, I, I don't get sore at all. Like, you, you could throw me on a two-a-day. I can do a lift. Hell yeah. I can yeah. do a run, you know, or I can do a lift and uh -huh. a bike, and it's not going to do anything to me. Like, uh -huh. I feel spry. Like, it feels good. So it's interesting. And there's a few other things in there, but those are really your key components of it. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you hope for people to get out of this, this drink? But what? Like, across-the-board performance improvement in, like, in life is yeah. it more focused in one specific area of life what do you think yeah so my hope for this product is for people just to experience have an easily accessible experience to get into ketosis and enjoy the benefits of super herbs so they can kind of live that elevate, elevated life right you know, across be, the board across the board right i want them to live more dynamically uh -huh. right be able to move not have those creaks and you know all the the inflammation in the joints or the muscles and all those types of things, right? Um, because that kind of pulls you out of the moment, right? We <laughs> talk about flow, yeah. And when you're thinking about uh, a a busted up hamstring or your your knee is sore from a few days ago, right? How do you get into flow state? You right? can't. You can't, <laughs> right? And you know also the ability to have these more relaxatory compounds in there. Um, and these de-stressors is a, is a great way to allow people to stay in the moment and be present, right? Whether you're being present and, you know, focusing on, you know, speaking to a friend or focusing on your work, right? To do more quality work or to make more quality connections with people, right? And so on, on the whole, it's really to try and elevate the, the, the lifestyle of my customer in effect, right? Uh, so they can fulfill their lives and wherever that may be because this is not a product for a climber this is not a product for uh, a, a lifter this is a product for a you know person that wants to do to them. be more engaged. to do you yes, yeah to, to be more you. engaged with whatever yeah. that means yeah. in yeah. life it's not some yeah it's not a niche product it's just for anyone who wants to to elevate their themselves and live that that next level life that is so sick yeah. that is the and it's, it's not something that's ever been done before. Uh, this would be, in terms of the ketones with super herbs, this is the first product in the world. Hell yeah, Charlie. There we go. Yeah. Charlie, yeah. when is this um, going to be available to us in the public? Uh, so right now, working on getting all the prototypes, uh, commercial 
great prototypes out. So that would probably be a couple months. So thinking about summer 2018, uh, we'll have this product ready to rock and roll and uh, get, get it in the hands of people, then uh, get feedback and start building this thing. I'm excited to start, um, you know, to test it out and, and use it myself and see how it uh, affects my training and running. I'm, I'm always looking for a longer lasting energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And a real and a real energy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not something that's kind of fabricated. What's been the hard, What's been the hardest part for you in this whole process? This whole process. <laughs> the funny thing of all the things, you think like you know trying to organize a co-packer. I was gonna say. Company. I feel like the hardest part would be like logistics, getting like the recipe down, like all that shit. So funny enough, it's that's really not been the case for me. Like, for the most part, finding and getting everyone organized has been pretty straightforward for me. Uh huh. Like finding the best flavor flavoring partner finding the best co-packer finding the best design agency all that kind of stuff really the thing that's been kind of challenging is just the pace of things it's what, slow. slow slow yeah it's really slow it feels like you, you really have to to get people up to speed you have to educate you know because people don't necessarily want to work with small companies if you're not ex- Expected to be a big brand, right? You know, so people are reluctant, and so you got to sell people on the vision. And I think once you do that, you know, it kind of lubricates the wheel. But you just still kind of have to work with like, the, kind of the corporate uh, uh, mo sometimes, right? You know, things just kind of take the back burner. But overall, I mean, it's it's been a good process. I think getting it together. Yeah, kudos to you, man. It's. It sounds like chaos from the outside. Just, but I mean, if it's something that you're passionate about, which you clearly are, then it, I'm sure there's, it makes it a lot easier. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm excited for you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited to get that to you. Guys. Yeah. No, I'm excited to just keep learning from you because when I heard that you train, you, you, you strength train like three times a week lifting heavy stuff and then you only eat like once a day. And you're stronger now. Stronger, by far. Yeah. That's oh, that's wild, man. It's kind of scary, actually. Yeah, it's no, like, it's good. No, I think, but I think <laughs> it, it's it's a testament to like you figuring out what the hell works for you, and then doing it. You know, I think yeah. that's important for people to do. You know. Absolutely, I agree. Hey, I really appreciate it, man. Glad it I appreciate it so much. It's it's an amazing thing that we're able to get so many different. Um, backgrounds and offer so many varying um, I guess stories and in, mm-hmm. in, in this case nutrition um, in that it's really a good way to just remind people to think about what they are eating so whatever you choose to do you know that's kind of your choice but but just to, to kind of think about it a bit more mm-hmm. and I, I think these conversations really generate that so I appreciate your time and giving us this this conversation. Thank you for having me. You said it ain't enough. We're living in a world that needs saving. Everything around is dividing up. Never been a while more famous. I'm looking for the words to sum it up. The best that we can do is that's amazing. Had a different meaning growing up. But now we're just getting lazy.
so it's best to forget it As everyone around us giving up Before they had a chance to regret it Signed it all away just to blow it up Guess we had to live it to learn it Ask us if we do it again But we're already in